Hello, my name is Tess Davis and I'm the Executive Director of the Antiquities Coalition. You heard from our chairman and founder, Deborah Lair, earlier in the program. She realized the need for our organization during the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. In the weeks after the uprising, the world held its breath as across the country, thieves plundered ancient sites, storerooms, places of worship, and museums. However, when thieves threatened the Cairo Museum, in the midst of the chaos, brave Egyptians linked hands to form a human chain around it, risking their lives to save its priceless collection from looters. They succeeded, and the Egyptian Museum in Cairo remains the oldest archaeological museum in the Middle East, with the largest collection of pharaonic antiquities in the world, and over 170,000 artifacts total. This heroism, which was repeated time and again throughout the country, inspired us to act. Museums remain a strong inspiration for our work, as well as a key partner. We've partnered with the Smithsonian, the world's largest museum and research complex, on public programming to raise awareness of the threat of cultural racketeering to countries in crisis. Just this year, at the Bahrain National Museum, we also joined with the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities in hosting a forum on improving legal frameworks and building responsible markets. Spanning 6,000 years of history and housed in a modern architectural masterpiece, the institution is one of the finest in the region. And in collaboration with the Syriac Heritage Museum in Erbil, Iraq, and the Bardo Museum in Algiers, we've also supported the digitization of important collections, ensuring that their ownership can be verified if objects ever end up on the black market. We also use our platform to encourage museums to strengthen their best practices for collecting, due diligence, and transparency. Given these global efforts, in recent years, we've been encouraged by museums tackling challenges head on in creative ways. Indeed, museums have long been at the forefront of efforts to fight the looting of archeological sites and trafficking of antiquities. In April of 1970, the curators of the University of Pennsylvania Museum released the Pennsylvania Declaration in recognition of the increasing illicit trade in cultural objects, requiring a new threshold of provenance before acquisition. The strong statement not only marked an important shift from previous attitudes, but exemplified early leadership and precedent for the international community to redefine its approach to collecting antiquities. 50 years later, museums are still key allies in the fight against the illicit trade in antiquities, and we're thrilled to see different ways that they are serving as catalysts for creativity to inspire others in this fight. One way is through creative exhibitions. From the margins of the G20 summit to the Venice Biennale, we have seen creative exhibitions addressing the issue of looted and stolen antiquities. Museums around the world could build on these examples and others to use their unmatched platform to help policymakers, the art market, and the general public better understand threats from cultural racketeering and how we can fight back together. Through such ex exhibitions, lectures, and other programming, they can reach a wide audience to help them understand the problem. We just wanted to share three examples that especially resonated with us. One example comes from the Kunsthaus Zurich in Switzerland. The Brüller collection has been on view there since 2021, but the Kunsthaus has decided to adopt a new approach to explain how Emil Brüller built up his collection. The exhibit now presents 120 of his artworks while also delving into the past of his collection and the state of provenance research, as well as the history of some of the works that were owned by Jewish collectors who fell victim to Nazi persecution. To accompany this transparent approach to the exhibition, the museum has also partnered with the historian who will publish a report at the end of the summer, reviewing the provenance research carried out by the foundation. Another museum in Zurich, which I just had the opportunity to visit, the Museum Reitberg, is also not shying away from issues of collecting and provenance. In an exhibit on pathways of art, the museum addresses the ownership history of objects head on, showcasing the art while also tackling tough questions such as to whom do the objects belong, which stories are told and which are not told, how do objects get to the museum, and what happens to objects on their way. And an example from my country's capital, Washington, D.C., from about a decade ago, Echoes of the Past, the Buddhist cave temples of Shangtang Shan on display at the National Museum of Asian Art in 2011, 
This exhibit combines sixth century Chinese Buddhist sculpture with 3D imaging technology of the Buddhist, Buddhist cave temples in Northern China. These limestone caves were severely damaged in the first half of the 20th century. Their contents chiseled away and offered for sale in the international art market. But the digital cave virtually reconstructed them, allowing visitors to be able to envision some of the caves as they appeared before their destruction. Another way museums is tackling this issue is through innovative collaboration around repatriations. Rather than a negative loss, museums should start to view repatriations as positive opportunities to connect with the global public and form international partnerships to further responsible cultural exchange, including long-term loans, traveling exhibitions, and collaborative agreements. One recent example of this comes again from the Smithsonian National Museum of Asian Art and the Republic of Yemen, who formed a partnership which allows that institution to preserve and present Yemeni artifacts until they can be safely repatriated. The artifacts are represented as on loan from Yemen to the NMAA, where they will be researched and exhibited until their eventual return. And yet another way of strengthening best practices. Many of the ethical guidelines, national laws, and international treaties we rely on to combat the illicit trade are now decades old. It is time to upgrade our strategies just as criminals have upgraded theirs to protect both our cultural heritage and the legitimate art market. Museums should be at the forefront of efforts to do this and can foster a wide global movement. In May of last year, following the AC's specific recommendations for strong, immediate, and concrete action, we were pleased to see that the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York announced a commitment to new policies and practices on ancient art and artifacts, including a recognition from Director Max Holing that whatever unlawfully entered our collection should not be in our collection. Their plan includes hiring a provenance research team of four experts to audit its holding, as well as forming a committee of 18 curators, conservators, and others to review all legal and ethical guidelines. We thank all of these museums who are using creativity to fight threats to our cultural heritage and look forward to seeing what innovations they will propose in the future. Thank you for hearing our comments today and for all that you're doing in this field. We appreciate it.